Okay, time for the first of what I hope are two 30-minute writing sessions for today. I'm trying to build up my tolerance, I'm trying to do 30-minute sessions that are pain-free. They're going to be slow. Yeah. But what I'm going to focus on is accuracy. I figure as I increase my accuracy, uh, my speed will just naturally pick up. And also I'll start getting like the, the little arpeggiation type things like T-H-E I can already do. I know where the keys are for that now. Um, so that'll get faster. Uh, let's see. I <clears throat> made some changes to my keyboard layout. I switched the command and option and the command and control. Um, I've remapped... I already had remapped uh, forward delete to control, by the way, uh, just because this used so much in Emacs and it already remapped uh, caps lock to control. The really annoying key positions for me still, this left and right arrow, oh, I mean, forget the fact that you don't have the inverted T that's already annoying, but... I don't even really know which fingers I'm supposed to use for those two. For whatever reason, I find it really hard to reach those. Also, this left shift, escape, and to some extent tab, I find these really awkward, the way they're positioned. And I always I always get them mixed up. Uh, yeah, over here is maybe not quite as bad, but those are the keys I still find super annoying. I also find it quite hard to do the number keys. Now, I haven't typed a lot of numbers, so... Um, maybe it's not as bad and I don't use numbers as much in general, but I definitely don't have those down uh, with the touch typing. And some of these, uh, and also, oh yeah, the quote. I find the quote key really awkward to to, re to reach. Part of it is, you know, notice that the height is different. So the one is actually lower down than the two. And so I'll try to go for the single quote, and I'll hit the one, for example. That's pretty uh, pretty common. Uh, just I'm used to having these lined up more. So some of these I think I'll get over time, but uh, those are the annoyances. And th these arrow keys, I don't know a good place to put the arrow keys. That's the problem. Like I would actually move those physically, um, but I don't know of a good place that's not going to mess up the Dvorak layout. So. I don't know. I might just have to leave, you know, like live with that. Um, I'd even thought about, you know, using these like special function keys, um, moving them there. I could do that. The, these two keys are used specially for mounting the virtual drive for the keyboard for, for remapping the keys. Uh, so I don't want to mess with those if I can avoid it. The up and down, I, I don't mind those quite as much, although they're still annoying. But these left and right are really horrible. I hate that layout. Um, I guess I could put... I don't really use home and end or page up, page down a lot right now. Yeah, I don't know. I could, I've could. i also thought about moving the arrow keys here because I use those arrow keys so much more. And in Emacs, you can hold down a modifier and an arrow key to get page up, page down behavior. So, you know, that might... That's something I'd consider. I'd, I'd actually consider losing those keys entirely in order to, you know, like my regular keyboard for my laptop doesn't have page up, page down, home, in keys. Yeah, maybe I'll try that. I mean, yeah, it's a little annoying to lose those, but like I said, in Emacs, where I spend most of my time typing, I, I know how to, to, to deal with that. I mean, it's still not going to have an inverted T, but it might be easier to reach. I don't know. These are still kind of hard to reach with your thumb. Anyway, the arrow is the arrow situation is grim. That's all I can say about it. All right, so that's that's my current setup. Uh, I got my clock set to thirty minutes. That's great. And here's where I'm going to type. Um, yeah, I just made a will radio where I talked about the fact that it's kind of boring, probably to watch these videos. Um, and it is true, I don't listen to music while I'm, while I'm doing any of this, while I'm typing or whatever, or making a book. Um, maybe I should. Maybe I should listen to some relaxing music. Yeah, I could. I, I tend not to think about it. I, 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 I tend to want, if I'm trying to do something as hard as I can, 
I generally don't want music with the single exception if I'm doing a really, really long coding session that's creative, like for mini Canron, if I've got some ideas I'm going to explore, then I will very much listen to music um, to sort of just like get myself pumped up and to keep going. I don't know, because I'll, I'll do that. I'll hack on those things for like, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours sometimes. You know, sometimes I will go until 6 a.m. or whatever. Um, you know, not too often recently, which actually I miss. I like doing that. Uh, but when I'm in that kind of creative mood, you know, the, the music, I think, actually helps at some point. Uh, probably doesn't help for any, you know, if I'm, if I'm working on some really tricky thing, I'll turn the music off for a little bit, but then I'll turn it on when I'm doing creative coding. Um, I know people who play Starcraft listening to music. Yeah. Maybe helps them relax. It's probably, probably reasonable. But anyway, I, uh, was listening to some music before, you know, starting this video. So I often listen to music beforehand. And I was listening to a Toho album uh, that I came across relatively recently that I didn't know about. It's from a Dogen circle called Frozen Starfall. And there's a singer who sings in German named Sassy. Uh, this is a, a really cool Toho album. So if you're into Toho project music, I should make a video about Toho. Maybe I'll make my podcast uh your eyes shine when maybe I'll make my first episode because I tried doing an epo epi with a friend and we had a good conversation, but the audio I messed up. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll talk about Toho in, for one of those podcasts, but, uh, in any case, Toho is a game. It's a genre of music. It's a fandom. It's hard to even explain concisely what it is. Um, there, there are lots of people who make albums based on Toho Project Music, which is, it's not, it's not in the public domain, but it's, uh, it has very, um, there, the, there are rights that uh, the Zoon, who created Toho, uh, lets fans use the music, and sort of the way like the Grateful Dead and Fish would let fans record. Um, from the soundboard, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of that, um, in a sense, except you can make your own, you know, covers and, and all that, as long as it's not commercial, if it's commercial, you know, Zoom wants a cut, but in any case, um, there are a zillion of these albums that people have made. And so this one is in German and it's actually really awesome. I didn't know Toho would sound so great in German. So I was listening to a little of this, uh, I don't like every song. But some of them are awesome. So thought I would share something that I think is amazing. Um, so if you are bored watching one of these typing videos, well, you can just not watch it. <laughs> That's one, one option. That's probably a reasonable option. Or you can embrace the boredom. I think that's a reasonable option as well. Just kind of, you know, float off and think about uh, other interesting things while you are under stimulated, I think that's really important. Or you could uh, listen to some Toho project music. So anyway, I think maybe I'll share something that I find interesting or beautiful. Uh, maybe some some music that I was listening to before I do one of these recordings. You know, just to, cause I think that's fun to share the things that I think are are cool. Um, there's this idea I have, I call it the feeling. Okay, certain things have the feeling and certain things don't have the feeling for me. Um, Scheme has the feeling. Scheme definitely has the feeling. Mini Canron has the feeling for the most part. Um, yeah, so there are just certain things that I like that have a certain feeling to me and it's sort of like, as soon as I see it or understand, I'm like, of course, of course, that makes sense. Of course, that's the way you would do it. Um, you know, so anyway, Toho Project is like that. 
I didn't even know existed until I started going to Japan and getting started becoming interested in Japanese culture. Um, not that long ago, actually. And I certainly didn't know about this album or the circle until recently, but surprisingly awesome, as a friend would say. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let us commence with uh, 30 minutes of typing. And just get set up here. All right, let me get my water. All right, so I, I think 30 minutes... 30 minutes may be about as long as I want to go in one sitting without getting up and moving around. I certainly don't think I'd want to go longer than an hour, even if my wrists hold up. I think it's just too long probably to be sitting. I mean, I do Zoom calls for an hour all the time, but, you know, if I do three calls back to back, I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm toast. Um, it's surprising. I mean, I could do all sorts of other things that are much more engaging or manually intensive or things like that. But three hours of Zoom calls, oh, I don't know. I think a lot of people have Zoom fatigue in the same way. Eh, so I guess I could probably do an hour, but I don't want to do more than an hour at a time. Okay, enough talking. Uh, I'm going to be typing. I'm not, I'm not even going to call this writing. I don't have to write. I'm only going to try to type. I'm going to try to go for accuracy and try to type for the full 30 minutes. Doesn't matter what I type. I could type anything I'm thinking about. I'm just trying to get in my 100 hours towards proficiency um, so that I can actually work on the book. If I type some sentences that could go into a book, great. If, they, if I type sentences that might go in book one or book in, that's great. doesn't matter. Um, that's not what this is about. This is about just sitting in front of the keyboard for an hour every day typing and doing it without pain, trying to figure out how to do it without pain. And then that's the mechanics and everything else. After that, I can allocate those words and that uh, time towards books in the future. Here we go. All right, gotta stop looking at the keyboard. Got it. The little successes in life. Got it. Ah, see, I saved an Emacs. Woohoo! That's actually surprisingly hard. Okay. Um, okay. First, first chink in the armor. Wait, I. Huh? All right, I don't even know how I did that. How is that even possible? I tried to hit shift and hit J. Sometimes things happen on this keyboard where I'm like, I didn't. Okay. By the way, on this keyboard with these keycaps, there's no raised thing for the home row. So sometimes I have my fingers on the wrong keys. I'm still figuring out how to do that.
Whoops, that was the wrong, wrong key. Oh, is it Control X U? All my muscle memory is off. There we go. Whew. Undo is an important uh, key combo. All right. I just noticed, by the way, if I close my eyes, somehow it's a little easier. Yeah, nice. Okay, my eyes were closed most of that. All right, let's try to close again. <clears throat> Ooh, wow. Oh. All right, don't get cocky. Ah, okay. Almost. All right, can I use the dreaded arrow keys? Why are the arrow keys here? I find these arrow keys impossible to use. I think I have to remap these to home and end. By the way, my keys are not clacky at all, or thunky, and so I I can't really feel when the key press is happening, so I just kind of have to trust it. Not exactly what I wanted. Okay, I was on the wrong row. I guess there's the disadvantage to typing with your eyes closed.
find the B. The B and the F are really awkwardly positioned. Okay, arrow keys. I can type them, but I have to take my entire hand off the home row. Sort of defeats the purpose.
Wow, I actually type faster with my eyes closed. <clears throat> I'm not surprised. Like, uh, my friends have pointed out to me that if I'm thinking really hard, I'll stare at a blank wall or close my eyes. Um, I don't know. Somehow I can just visualize much better and I don't get distracted by the visual stuff. I don't know, probably some ADHD thing, but definitely works for me. Okay, I'm slow, but my accuracy, I think, is getting better, especially with my eyes closed. I gigger, it will take me about two months. All right, that's pretty good with my eyes closed. Now that, that double A could have just been because I can't feel the keystroke. All right, I knew I might have messed up the F. F, I still have trouble with. F and B are off to the side a little bit. All right, and I tried going for the two. I was trying to reach for the three. Uh, at least it was close. All right, even when I'm making mistakes, I tend to to be closer. All right, uh, have a little right wrist discomfort. Let me take a sip of water. I think I'll change the angle slightly of my right keyboard try to keep my wrist a little more straight <clears throat> okay that's the second time i've done that I don't really know how I'm doing it. I'm trying to do shift H and I must be typing function H. Interesting. Function H types J. Why in the world function H types J? I couldn't tell you. Uh, okay. It's like I said, it's really hard for me to hit shift, escape, and tab accurately. At least with my left hand.
Wow, it's going on six. <clears throat> Actually, it's probably six years, to be honest. Because I, I think that the uh, Reason Schemer second edition was released in like February or March of 2018. So I guess that'd be six years. Now, I mean, COVID did kind of throw a wrench in things. So I, mean, I, I think uh have to acknowledge that. But even with COVID, you know, in some sense, COVID is an excuse to spend more time writing books. But that's sort of also psychologically not really what happened with COVID, at least for me. Anyway, uh, six years too long not have a book come out. Probably six months is too long. All right. Stern Gill, eh, my right one's okay right now. Eh, a little bit. I'll be happy to finish up. Traditional StarCraft greeting. Okay. Uh, finish that. Got in 30 minutes. Uh, let's see what I learn. Wow, I really hate those arrow keys. So I think I will go ahead and reposition. Um, yeah, I'll do the page up and page down, be up and down arrow. And then I'll have these be uh, maybe left and right. 
respectively. I think I'll try that. It's just it's way, 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 way too awkward. Um, and I'll put, I guess I'll just swap them with home and end and page up and page down, but oh, intolerable. Other than that, what have I learned? I learned that I'm actually considerably more accurate with my eyes closed. I just seem to visualize better. Um, probably it's just practice. If I get better over time, it might not matter. Probably do it with my eyes open just fine. But I find any sort of visual input pretty distracting when I'm trying to learn a new complicated task. Um, my right wrist was starting to get a little uncomfortable and... Um, my right ring finger was starting to get a little uncomfortable. Um, oh, we'll see. Uh, that was 30 minutes, maybe maybe 20 minute sessions work better. Um, I'm going to take off my... Well, no, I'll leave the wrist compressions on. I'll take a little break and uh, I'll do another another 30 minutes and see how it feels. If If I start getting right wrist pain you know five minutes in i might i might uh stop it and take a break and then uh, do do a session after a few hours so i want to figure out like what's a reasonable amount of time i can work on um before I, my wrist give me give me pain so i was able to do 15 minutes that was okay 30 minutes might be pushing it right now um part of it may be also i just my technique with my right hand might be off a little bit so Maybe need to work on that. Uh, all right. Thank you and uh, talk to you soon.